So, looking at this task two, what would you do there? And then more or less just rearrange the formula in the direction of the quantity that we would like to have. So um, we, we, we know this level here. Uh, we, know, we know the value on this side of the equation. We know V1 and we want to get V2. So let's uh, write this once again here. Um, so it's 20 times... LG, what does LG mean? Log. Yeah, and which logarithm? Just exactly, the, so we would call it decadic logarithm, um, but it's, it's logarithm to the base of 10. Okay, and then we have the ratio between the two voltages. Um, yeah. Um, according to the logarithm rules, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then I could I could write it like this to say twenty times. Then uh, we, we need to have some some brackets or parentheses and say it's. Okay. So. Yeah, so, so let's uh, do it step by step. So uh, the level divided by 20 uh, will be the same as the difference. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not uh, super happy with this uh, way of calculating it. I will tell you why not in a second, but uh, let's do it this way. Um, and so we want to have V2, so we just say plus LG V, oops, V1. Um, and if I change the sides of this equation, then we get should get something like this plus LG V1. Okay, and still we have the decadic logarithm here. Sure. So uh, the next step would be uh, to just put 10 at the base and then yeah. on the left side. Have the whole equation like ten to the power of yeah. ten to the power of both sides. Okay, so, so on the left side and the right side, ten to the power of the whole term that's written there. Yeah, not e, but ten to the power of the level divided by twenty plus the Descartes logarithm of v one. Okay, this this would be some way to do it. So, um, yeah, powers can be multiplied by adding the exponents. Um, so we could rearrange this in a way to say, okay, it's 10 to the power of LV divided by 20 multiplied with 10 to the power of LG uh, the decadic logarithm of V1. And now let's say these two operations will cancel each other. So we end up with um, 10 times this level divided by 20 multiplied with V1. Okay. And w with this equation at the end, I'm also totally happy once again. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and uh, okay. So now we could do this and say, okay, uh, 110 divided by 20 is 5.5, uh, 10 to the power of 5.5, 10 to the power of 5 would be 100,000, 10 to the power of 6 would be a million. Um, yeah, so it's something in between there. <laughs> um, and... 
V1 is one microvolt. Um, so if, if, if we would have 10 to the power of six, we would have one million multiplied with one microvolt would be one volt. Um, and if it would be five here, the exponent would be five, then we would get 0 0.1 volt. And so we get something in between, we get um, uh, 0 0.3 something uh, volt. Um, of course, we can also do this here and say our voltage V1 is one micro 10 to the power of minus six. And this level of our second voltage is 110. And so then the equation was that we get the voltage V2 if we take 10 to the power of this level divided by 20 and then multiplied with the voltage V1 and we get 0 0.316 something um, volts. And this would be 316 millivolts. Okay. Questions so far? So let's say this is line one, is line two, line three, this, this line here. Yeah, using 10 as the base. Yeah. Could we use that earlier? So like one line before, so we get rid of the low regimes earlier? Yeah, the, we, 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 yes, we, we, we could have, we sh should have probably also used this here, or I'm, I'm not super happy with this step here, from here to here. What would you do instead? Huh? Uh, I would I would just directly divide by 20 and then uh, use this thing okay. um, and uh, so we are we are skipping one step um, we, 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 we can do it in a second maybe uh, like I intended I mean this is not it's not um, it's not totally wrong in a, in the mathematical meaning um, from a mathematical point of view it's it's totally fine from from an engineering point of view it's it's difficult or it's a bit challenging because this operation here uh, let me take a different color uh, the step from here to here um, is not super good um, uh, anyone an idea why once again because of the units so from a mathematical point of view it's totally fine but if you if you think about the units and i mean that's why this equation is also exactly in this in this way um, you can only calculate the logarithm of a number you cannot calculate the logarithm of a unit it's the same you cannot calculate uh, e2 or e to the power of something with a unit. Mm -hmm. You cannot calculate sine function of something with a unit or cosine or tangent or wh whatever. You can only calculate these functions out of numbers, out of unitless dimensionless quantities. And we have a voltage here uh, and here, and they both have the unit volt. And so then the units will cancel each other the remaining thing in the argument of this logarithm function is a dimensionless unitless quantity and then you can calculate the logarithm out of this, no problem. And so then we multiply it with 20 and we add this unit of dB, which is something that you will also have probably later on in your studies. Um, and we can, uh, yeah, we can also talk a little bit about, about what, this, what this dB means. In, um, why it's why it's useful in most cases or in some cases and, and some maybe not but um, yeah the, the problem is if we use this logarithmic identity which is perfectly fine as said from a mathematical point of view but here now we have the problem we calculate the logarithm out of 
a quantity that has a unit. And here we also calculate the logarithm out of a quantity that has a unit. Um, as, as long as they have, let's say, the same unit, that's no problem. <laughs> Um, but if, if you would insert this, let's say, in volt, and if you would insert this in millivolt, you get problems. Because yeah, then this, uh, it, it does not work anymore. Um, so what we would need to do here to make it work, maybe sh I should not write it red this way. Um, let's say if we, um, if we expand, can I delete this? If we, if we expand this fraction here uh, with one volt and one volt, won't change anything about or with the mathemat mathematical expression. And then we could do something and say, okay, I have here the voltage divided by one volt and I have the voltage here divided by the other one volt. Um, and then, then this, I would totally agree, then this makes sense again, also from an engineering point of view. And then now you could also insert this here in, I don't know, millivolt, microvolt, kilovolt, what, whatever you would like, because then volt and volt will cancel each other, and we would take care about the remaining numbers. Um, yeah, but um, okay, yeah, so I no, also need to do the same here and here and, and probably also here. Um, yeah, okay. Boom, boom, boom. So I think the easier way to do it, um, let's take a new page, uh, would be we start with our equation. The level of the second voltage is 20 times the decadic logarithm of this ratio between the two voltages. And we want to get this voltage V2. So the first thing that we get rid of is the 20 by, multi, uh, by dividing by 20. So we get this level divided by 20 and then the decadic logarithm of the ratio of these two voltages. And then we use this um, the, the counter operation of the decadic logarithm 10 to the power of the expression on both sides. Um, so we get 10 to the power of this level divided by 20. And on this side, we just get the ratio between the two voltages. And then the last step is we multiply with the voltage V1. And then we also end up um, changing both sides of the equation with uh, V2 is V1 times 10 to the power of this level divided by 20. does not look that nice. Let's rewrite this. Okay. Yeah, and so if you check, this is now the very same equation that we also uh, ended up with here this way. Um, but oops, here it's more, more correct in, in terms of the units. And now you might ask, yeah, but the level here, the, the level V2, this is given in decibel. And so if we have this uh, in decibel divided by 20, uh, we still have the unit decibel here, but you just told us that you cannot take 10 to or E to or any number to the power of a unit. Uh, but this dB is not really a unit, it's just a pseudo unit. And so with the dB it works because dB is no real. Um, dB is just something to that you add to show that it's um, it's a it's a level or it's a, um, a figure um, expressed in dB, but it's no real unit. Okay. Have you heard about this dB before? F from where? I've taken classes. Ah, you have taken classes, okay. 
Anyone else? Some. Yeah, from audio equipment, you often have this. I mean, if I would go to my OBS studio here for streaming, um, then, for example, my microphone level there, this is expressed in dB, what you can see there at the bottom. Um, and yeah, so if I maybe leave it in this way, but just change to full screen of my camera. So the thing is that this dB or the unit Bell is named after Alexander Graham Bell. Um, who was also an engineer and a speech therapist and some inventor and he did not really invent the telephone but he made it commercially successful let's say like Bill Gates not invented the graphical operation system but also made it commercially successful and um, yeah he found out that um, our our feeling or our impression of sound pressure also works on this logarithmic scale and um, other people found out that also our sense of light and our sense of pressure that we can feel with our skin also works on a logarithmic scale and for yeah, for, for, for sound for audio it's uh, it's a bit difficult to explain but um, let's say I have, do you have another pen? Yes. So if, if I have, if I would have different weights on my table and if I would, for example, have five gram and six gram, and if I would lift them up, I would know the difference. Um, so, but I would, if I would have 50 gram and 51 gram, once again, a one gram difference, I, I, probably would no, not note the difference. But if it would be 50 gram and 60 gram, once again, I would note the difference. Because it's not about the, the absolute difference, it's about the ratio difference. This is what is covered inside this logarithm. Um, and it's a little bit the same with light. Yeah? So if you have a, if you have a classical um, light bulb, let's say with 20 watt, and you have another light bulb with 40 watt, you would clearly see a difference um, because it's like twice the power. But if you would have 100 watt and 120 watt, which is again a 20 watt difference, you won't, you won't almost see a difference. But if you have 100 watt and 200 watt, once again, you would see a difference. And it, it's a little bit the same with, with audio, but there it's like the, the absolute sound pressure is not a quantity that we can relate to. Um, yeah, and this is called Weber Fechner law. Um, so Alexander Graham Bell has found out that it works for our hearing, um, and other people have found out okay that it also works for our impression of light intensity and 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 um, as that pressure feeling that we feel with our skin. And now the question is, why is this useful that our human senses work like this? On a, our, our human senses uh, work work like like this equation here. And the, the advantage of this equation is that if you have very high voltages and very small voltages, if you have very high ratios and very small ratios and put them inside this equation, you always end up with handy numbers. Um, so I would say all voltages that you can reasonably generate and measure in electrical engineering would fit into the range of minus 200 to plus 200 dB microvolt, for example, or dB volt maybe better um, yeah and, and and that's why your your solution uh, or your way of solving it is also great because it can show it shows that we can use these nice logarithmic rules um, at least in electric engineering and in other engineering sciences to uh, get rid of 
a division, which is hard to calculate in your head, and turn it into a difference. And if we would have a multiplication of quantities, this would be a sum. And so if you have signal chains, you have some signal and then you have some amplifier and then you have an antenna and you lo lost something of the signal and you have some propagation path, but then you have an amplifier again. Yeah, so in your head, you would need to calculate, okay, I must multiply by the amplification factor of 300 of the amplifier. And then I need to divide by the, the loss factor of the antenna. I need to divide by the loss factor of the propagation. I need to multiply by the amplification of the second amplifier. It would be very hard to do it in your head. But if you do it in decibel, it's very simple because you just, okay, I have a signal. I add 50 dB of the amplifier. I lose 10 dB by the antenna. I lose 100 dB by the propagation. Then I need to add 40 dB at the end to get a useful signal. And so that's why these dB values are very often used in, in electrical engineering um, because multiplication turns into a sum, division turns into a difference. And you can express a broad range of values, very, very small voltages and powers and currents and very, very large ones into this handy range always of, let's say, minus 200 plus 200 dB. And this is the reason why our uh, human senses also work in this way. Um, because we want to be able to see just very, very small light intensity if it's dark outside. Uh, we should not be completely blind. And still, if we go out um, today, it does not look too cloudy, right? And then in the, um, in the daylight. So I think during the night, um, I'm, I'm not super confident with this optical quantities, but we have something like 0.1 looks outside or 0.01, something like this. And during glazing sun, we have maybe 50,000 or 100,000. And so our eyes need to cope with this large range. Um, and that's why our eyes also work on a logarithmic scale. The same with, um, with audio. Small changes or very, very... Uh, Small sickness should be audible, and still, if there's some, um, I don't know, or some 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 jet starting next to us, our ears should not be destroyed, and that's why we need. Um, as engineers, we would call this a high dynamic range. We have measurement instruments with a very high dynamic range. We can measure small quantities and we can measure high quantities because it works on this logarithmic scale. Um, and the only reason, uh, not the only reason, the only way where this, uh, where this works in a different way, um, can, can you imagine one human feeling um, or one human sense that does not work on a logarithmic scale? Exactly, temperature. Um, so. Mm, my tea is already quite cold, but imagine you have two buckets of water and you have one bucket um, with, uh, with zero degrees Celsius water and you have another bucket with two degrees Celsius water. And if you put your hand inside the water, zero degrees Celsius, okay, very cold. Two degrees Celsius, okay, a little warmer, you, you, you will know the difference. Um, if you have 20 degrees Celsius and 22 degrees Celsius, you will also note the difference. If you have 40 degrees Celsius and 42 degrees Celsius, you will also note the difference. You will more note um, absolute changes in temperature and not these, um, let's say, ratio changes of temperature. And why? Yeah, because uh, we don't need this high dynamic range for temperature measurement. If it's below zero degrees Celsius, um, it's freezing cold and we will possibly die. And if it's above 40 degrees Celsius, it's super hot and we will also possibly die. And so that's why the range, the, the temperature range where the human being is comfortable is just very limited. And that's why we don't need this. We have a more linear, uh, uh, linear scale of feeling and not a logarithmic scale. Okay. Um, so, 
more questions, comments, something to add? Do you have something to say? Yeah, I want to. Okay, excellent. Do you know why sometimes we have the 20 there before the logarithm and sometimes we have a 10? Uh, 10, that is a base of 10. Sometimes we find 10 logarithm to the base of 10 of two, the ratio of two components. And sometimes, like now, we find 20 logarithm to the base of 10 of these two components. Why sometimes it's 10 and why sometimes it's 20, in your opinion? I think it's dependent on the um, given measurement. So if it's we are calculating with uh, means, so it's 20. And if you're cal calculating with like power, it's 10. Yeah. And do you know why? Because we can define the power as V squared divided uh, to the resistance. So it's P squared divided P squared and the resistance go away. Yeah, so um, le b because I write, uh, th that's an excellent comment. So this, the decibel is usually and only reasonably defined for powers. Um, so you, you, you take a ratio of two powers, you take this decadic logarithm, and then you get bell. You get the unit bell. But bell is not very handy. That's why people always multiply with 10. And then you get from bell, you get decibel. So the 10 is because we don't want to have bell. The 10 is because we want to have decibel. And yeah, the unit bell is written with just one L and the human person Alexander Graham bell is written with two L. I, I never learned why it, there is this difference, but it is like this. So, but the 10 is because of the DESI. Um, and so now th this equation we will talk, or Professor Fick will talk about later in the lecture. Um, so power in electrical meaning is, and now my German so we would write V divided by the current, uh, voltage times current. And if you have an ohmic load, if you have a resistor, resistance can be calculated by voltage divided by current. This is Ohm's law. We will also talk about this in the later lecture on. And so now if we uh, rearrange this equation, for example, in the direction of the current, then the Oops, current is voltage divided by the resistance. And if we now take this equation and insert this here, then we end up with uh, what Francesco just said. Power is voltage squared because we have one voltage here and another voltage here. So we get voltage squared divided by the resistance. And so now we can take this. Um, and insert this here and here inside our logarithmic function. So we get 10 decadic logarithm and we get voltage 2 squared divided by the resistance and we get voltage 1 squared divided by the resistance. And now we can assume that both resistances for the same for the voltages are the same so that we can cancel these resistances and then the remaining step is there's this nice logarithmic rule uh, right that you also if you um, how does it work Uh, it's, it's, I think it's, uh, can I move this? Yeah, it's hidden behind my camera window, but you, you know, you know, the emoji with the, with the tear and there are these also emoji logarithm rules. I will, I won't find them quick, but if you have the logarithm of the emoji with the tear, you can rearrange it in a way that the tear goes before. The, so we can, 
put the 2 in front and then the 2 and the 10 will turn into 20 logarithm of these voltages. And that's why sometimes we use a 10 and sometimes we use a 20. Um, 10 are used, the factor of 10 is used for power quantities and the factor of 20 is used for what is called root power quantities. And this is typically current voltage, uh, field strength, stuff like this. There's a nice um, brochure of uh, German uh, measurement equipment manufacturer located in Munich. Uh, and the man measurement manufacturer is called Rode and Schwarz. And they have a nice brochure that is called after Hamlet in this very uh, nice way, DB or not DB, everything that you ever wanted to know about decibels and were afraid to ask. And so you can also find some stuff there. I will uh, share this link later on.